Hi everyone! Welcome back to our live. Today we are talking about a topic where as a buyer, I super love to hear. I want to know when will the price start to drop so that I can come in. But as a seller, also very sian la when the price started to drop. But the thing about seller right now is that they still don't think that the prices are going to drop. Because property agents out there are just saying like, oh, buy la, buy the price won't drop one. In Singapore, property history, the price has never dropped. Mm. That's also quite true, mm. right? So I think today's topic, it appeals to buyers more. Because they want to know when's the right price, when's the right time to enter, and then when to spot good deals and undervalue deals. And a lot of people, I think, I think I just like, you know, sitting on the edge, waiting to enter the market. So I think what we are going to discuss today is uh, how do we determine if property prices are dropping. So I, I it definitely not just affect buyers. Like I think sellers are also in a situation where should I sell? If I got a lower offer, should I sell the property? I mean things like that. Mm. Or, or if I sell, then should I wait to buy? Because if if let's say I take a stand of saying that the price will drop, for example. Can I just sell and wait? Can also, ma? Can also. So I can actually sell my property and maybe wait for another six months, nine months to mm. see whether I want to buy a property. Mm. That is also a situation that you can you can be thinking about. So I mean, today we are just going to share with you some of the data regarding to the last time where the price actually came down. Yeah. I'm actually quite excited because I think this is my first property cycle. Because mm. <laughs> I entered the industry about five years ago. Mm. When I entered that time, right, the market was very slow. Mm. Then after that, I saw how the market like boomed during after COVID, right? Then right now, I'm witnessing this transition mm. from the peak to the very bearish market. So, quite excited lah. But how many cycles have you seen? Ah? So, 2006 to 2008 is like really a boom market. Boom, lah. yes. Oh, boom yeah. market. So, during that period of time, uh, you will miss out property very fast. Lah. Like mm. Example, Caspian launch, I remember the buyers don't even have time to think. For example, even in Pasri State, we saw that. That uh, one make people very angry. Yeah. Then imagine uh, Pasri State is selling at 1,004, starting from mm. all the way up to about $2,000. In one day. In one day. But Caspian was at $600. Eh. So do you think buyers need to think really to whether mm. to buy or not to buy? Mm. So that time was like that. Lah. Then wow. after that, we went into a period where it's the Lehman crisis. Mm. That is the shortest correction that I see, about three, six months down market. Did the market went into recession? Not really. So the market was a bit fearful because you know the whole world is encountering a, mm. a, a recession. Mm, ma. Mm. But in Singapore property, the price actually dipped for a while and mm. it actually pushed up mm. even faster. Because sometimes we might be thinking, bear market is when the price is dropping, which is true. But the Bear market is not a market that is to be very fearful about. Mm. Uh, the most fearful market, uh, especially for agents, uh, is a nowhere market. Nowhere market. Which yeah. means that the sellers and buyers are not, you know... Sounds like something we are uh, going through right now. Uh, so it's like, <laughs> sellers still want very high, then buyers also don't want to give in. in. So in what? Way. Nobody make the move. In a way, in a way, but uh, just that the transaction okay. is lower. La. It's a bit concerning because uh, so I really feel it's a bit like today's situation. So transaction lower is the worst for agent. So today, mm. we are going to talk about four main things, which is the first one is the signs of the slowing market. And from this, how we're going to pick up signs, right? It's basically through all the news that you have seen, right? Mm. Later, we'll have zoom in into that. The second is the impact on market. Because as Alex said earlier, right? Mm. Right now, we are in the same time as per 2001 to the very slow market. So we want to look back at history and what happened back then when the market was a bit slower. The nowhere market. Nowhere market. It's a stagnant market. Okay, like, stagnant. It okay. It's, it's yeah. the same, same logic that we are talking about. The worst time is a stagnant market because mm. stagnant market means that volume drop. Why volume will drop in a stagnant market? Because the price cannot be agreed. Mm. But price haven't dropped. Ah. Mm. Volume dropped. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Because in the bear market, there will be volume also because the sellers will be giving in to the buyers. In the bull market, the buyers will be giving in to the sellers. Yeah. In so a stagnant no market, is no one wants to give in. I think we are still at the last verge of the bull market now. But we are like moving towards into a stagnant market. So later we can see yeah. how is it going to affect us. La. Then the third factors, I mean the third thing that we're going to go through today will be factors to determine if new launch 
prices will drop. Mm. Because earlier, the impact on the market will be more on like, of course, resale, mm. but it of course will have direct impact on the new launch cost. You know, it will also affect developers' confidence and also buyers' confidence. Mm. And last but not least, we will go into the live analysis of current developments mm. which we have been doing all this while. Science of slowing Science market. Science of yeah. slowing market. Mm. Okay, here I have, of course, a few articles, but it represents different segments of the market from landlord to tenant to seller to buyer and also developer. So let's take a look at the landlord and tenants first. Okay, mm. rental prices have dropped as much as what you have seen the title over here. If I can quote you an example on the ground, you know, just uh, end last year, which is around November, I rented a Momentum Park three bedroom at 5,008. Mm. You know, yesterday when I went to check the transaction, the latest three bedroom that was rented out, uh, same similar size, uh, 4,005. Dropped Ooh. by 1,000. So why the rental drop? Supply. Supply. As agent that is practicing on the ground, I can only say one thing. Because now it's not easy to rent out. So not easy to rent out, which means that the demand actually came down. And it can have a lot of reasons. Uh, they can oversupply issue, mm. demand came down. So today, uh, I feel uh, the market is very affected by two things. First, usually it's like hey, supply go up, price will go, come down, uh, mm. correct? Or demand go down, price will also go down. Uh. But today is two sides. Demand go down, supply go up. Mm. That's why there's a drastic drop in terms of the prices. prices. So, and so, also, yeah. mm. I think from a landlord's perspective, because so long is vacant, I think everyone who has been a mm. landlord or you know, even like common sense, you will know that mm. every month when it's vacant, you will still need to pay for a mortgage. Mm. And interest rate, frankly, I don't know, you know, people out there or those people who are watching, how much you actually refinance your property at. It could be a more of a higher interest rate, mm. like 4-3%. So it's very taxing. Mm. And because of that, right, um, a lot of landlords are also a bit panicky need to rent out ASAP, but yet the price also still hmm. cannot lowball them. Yeah, so we are in the this kind of like, like you said, nowhere market, even in the landlord and the tenant sector. So let's say I miss out one month rental, okay? Uh, I want 5,000. I got offer 4,005. I don't take the 4,005 offer. I will, one month I miss out how much? 4,005, ma? If two months I miss out $9,000, uh, correct, correct? So what I'm trying to say here is that if I hold on to my demand of 5,000 and I miss out two months of rental, I need about... It's a negative already. I need 18 months to cover back the difference there, which is, doesn't make sense now. Huh? So mm. that's why some landlord will actually let go. Uh, and you will see more of this happening because here you can see the article very clearly. Demand drop, slow, and rental listing search. Mm. So two, two sides. One, the demand actually came down and the supply go up, which is going to affect the market a lot. Mm. So hmm. the HDB volume, right? Frankly, HG prices have not dropped. Mm, yep. Okay, we are still seeing a lot of like what million dollar HDB create record high. But don't be fooled by all these news because these are just like the top liner. We are talking about entire market, actually the entire market in terms of volume, it is starting to slow or in fact it has dropped. And because of this, because on the ground again, uh, mm. I also am serving HDB buyer. Mm. The prices that the sellers want can be really ridiculous. Recently, I saw one listing, I think Topayo HDB, five room or something, asking two million. Like, come on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Seriously. The reality is that you can ask for whatever price that you want, right? But the reality is that HDB volume have dropped. Mm. And this is what the market is currently going through. Mm. Okay? But why price is still high? So let's say, uh, a uh, demand drop uh, doesn't equate to immediate drop of prices mm. or immediate increase of volume of supply. So demand drop, uh, it will take some time because let's say there's five buyers to one sellers for a very long period of time. So which means that sellers come out, it will be sold. Sellers come out, it will be sold and the right. price will continue to go up. And now it turned into one seller, one buyer. What well, the price drop? It still won't drop. Uh. But when it turned into two seller every month and one buyer, then you will start to see a situation where listings start to be accumulated. When it accumulates into a big amount, then the price will start to see a, a softening period. Mm. And the third one um, is your land bids mm. oh. over here. Okay. Of course, these are very minor uh, examples because mm. there's only a few land bids recently, mm. right? But also it do also affect developers' confidence. I think Alex work with developers more. Mm. Is, is developer basically very cautious now when it comes to bidding of land? Like what their top concern? Uh, when developer is, is who? 
when they are buying land. They are buyer. When they are buying when land, buying land correct? Yes. So mm. same like what the buyers are thinking. In the bull market, all developers want to bid for Chong, land. Yes. Uh, so like 10 developers, 15 developers, 20 developers bid for land. In a stagnant market, which is like today, as a developer, you will be more cautious. Definitely more cautious. Mm. Mm. So a lot of developers who bought when the land are not selling. Uh, actually, they make a lot. A lot of developers who bought because fear of missing out. Uh, then they maybe, have difficult time to sell. Maybe margin lesser. Just like the yeah. Thompson land, it's sold, I think, about $150 to $200 cheaper than the Lantor Mansion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw that. So Lantor Mansion sell at 2003, while Thompson sell at 2001. So if I see this one, uh, sell, this price can sell 70%. The, the chances of them selling cheaper, I mean, it's there, but it wouldn't be 2001. Uh, it would be maybe 2254, 2280. Mm. You know, they might give a bit of a discount here and there to make sure that the sales is doing well. But if they see this is happening, why I mean as a seller, just same thing. If you are a seller today, you bought a listing that is cheap. Huh? You bought a property, that time market rate is 600000 you bought 500000 Does not mean that today you will sell cheap. Yeah, so that's the same mentality yep. that you are looking at. Yeah. Huh? Okay, okay. Yep. next one. Um, HDB and private supply. Mm. It is going up because of the COVID-19, right? So it delayed uh, the construction of a lot of like BTOs, whatever. Mm. So um, all this, right, as promised by our minister, it will be ramping up. So in terms of property, right, everything is like a chain cycle. If there is a build out of BTO, of course, it will also affect the resale prices of condos and then to lender, etc, mm. etc. Et okay. Mm. So that means that more supply are coming into the market. Mm. All this right? is the biggest concern, uh, I feel. I mean, supply is the biggest problem. In the resale market, uh, there's only one party that can make the market move. Unless there's some global event like COVID, all these things. If not, usually, the market is moved by government also because they can yes. come up some policy to boost up the demand or they can come up more land to actually increase mm. the supply to actually mm. soften the it's price. It's all within their like finger that. tips, right? Uh, but for new launch, it's a bit different. New launch, developer-wise, they still can adjust the price accordingly, mm. the supply accordingly to make sure that the price actually go up in a smooth transition. Uh, later, we'll mm. tell you more. Uh. Okay. Last one is the new launch, new launch market. Yeah. Mm. New launch market, right? Over here, if you are so-called noticing new launch market, right? The percentage sold these days uh, hovers around 20-30%. Or it's actually less. Some even like 10 over percent. Mm. We don't take um, the latest launch like Langtor mention, mm. mentions and what, what's the other one? Jaden in, for example. Because mm. all these are very like mm. hype up project, right? Mm. But if you were to take a bird's eye view of the entire you know, Singapore mm. market, all the new launches, frankly, the sales is very slow. And I really spot the similar trend as to mm. 2018, that point of time. Because there were a lot of supply. Yeah. in the market and moving forward this year there will be even more supply so this is also a um, huge concern mm. because buyers are overwhelmed with options yep mm. i mean that's the thing huh? yep. okay so uh these are all the things that's happening how does it impact the market let me share with you just about some uh, data about HDB. Eh? Right. I'm just going to take this particular block in 645 because if we look at the overall data of all Pongo HDB, eh, you wouldn't be able to see the volume drop one eh? because the volume will drop from maybe 35,000 to 28,000, you know? So the drop is like 20%, okay? But in certain particular block, you will be able to see, especially maybe those blocks that is not so well sought after. So you see here, this is 645 Pongo. This unit is sold at 592. Before this unit, uh, 500 plus, 500 plus, 500 plus. You can see this period. Uh, every year, there's this block alone. Uh, there's about two to three transactions, LTD. Okay? Then you reach this point, uh, no transaction, 2013. And the whole of 2014, because only December, then the transaction came in. There's no transaction. So no transaction means what? Just now we are saying. It's a stagnant market. Nowhere market. Uh, so stagnant market means what? My illustration uh, is uh, when we go through a uh, market, uh, then when you go into a stagnant market, uh, it means that from a full seller's market, it turns into a nowhere market. Nowhere market. <laughs> then this is like what we call a turning point. So stagnant is a turning point. So stagnant market turn, uh, usually you will go down because now is from buyers giving to seller uh, to a point no one wants to give him, uh, which means the buyer is resistant. Uh. Mm. When buyer is resistant, Next is who give in? Most likely sellers. sellers. Mm. Okay. So why sellers will give in? Because sellers have been making so much profit in the last few years. If let's say I'm sitting on three, four hundred thousand profit. 
I cut 50,000 mm. I cut 100,000 You don't mind just taking a cut. They will take a cut. They still earn what? Mm. Right? So just earn little. If one or two sellers start to take cut, then the whole market will actually start, start to, to correct. Yep. But this stagnant market, we don't know it will be how long. Because no it's one knows scary. whether when the sellers will start to give in. So you can see from here, from 592, drop to 440. Immediately. Because this stagnant market very long. So they talk very long. Two years. Mm. Then all come in, 400 yep. plus. So if I'm here uh, and I know this market, uh, now I'm asking 592, uh, maybe in your mind as a seller, you will be looking at I want 630. Uh, but I tell you, if you got 580, take and run. Because the chances of it hitting 630 is very low. The chance of it going down below 550 is very high. So we get, we go by probability. I can't say this is definitely going to happen. But probability of dropping is higher than going up. Mm. So if you want a higher price, which means that you want the market to go up more. With all the situation in the market right now, what do you think are the chances the price will go up more? So this is the thing that you want yeah. to think about. Also, mm. this is HTB example. Mm. This is another block. Uh, this is in Bukit Batok also. Period of two years, no transaction. After that, from 766, 71 something, 727, 600 plus, 600 plus, 600 plus. Mm. So this one is a mm. turning point. Turning point after that is a downtrend. We didn't just take mm. random blocks. Huh? I, mm. I can assure you that regardless which block, HDB block that you are saying, so long it has mm. been, it actually went past the 213 mm. cycle, mm. that period definitely have corrected the price mm. of your property. If yeah. not, you know, you can just ask your agent to check. Because I've seen a lot of clients, every time mm. when I check their block, right, 100% their price mm. was corrected in 2013 or 2014, that period mm. of time. Yes. Yeah, and this is a general market trend back then. Mm. But there's a different drop that we are seeing. You see here, this is a almost a 30% drop. Here is a maybe 5 to 8% drop. So why there's such a huge difference? Because of the supply over in the, in the yes. estate. So mm. Pongo got too many supply. So especially if you are in the area, then you see surrounding all BTO, yep. surrounding all new, yep. new MOP cluster, ah, then you faster sell. If you are a condo, you are having a resale condo in, let's say, Tampanese, then you see treasure on a TOP, faster sell before TOP. You don't want to wait until treasure come up because there will be so many sellers right. that is mm. coming in. Yeah, yeah. Unless treasure's three bedroom is selling 1.8, your three bedroom is 1.2. Well, very huge price range. Ah. Mm. Ah, but if you are close one, ah, you are competitor, so you have to be careful. Yeah. So next, now we see, this is Warren, this is another condo. A uh, condo, we only take a particular size because if I take the whole condo, same problem, there will be a lot of transaction. I can't see the, really see the volume actually came down. But I want to show all of you when volume drop, uh, it's a time that we have to be very careful. So here, also no transaction for this particular size. Then you see from 1.1 to 8 million, go up to about 1 million. So drop about how much? Um, 128,000 for a lower floor unit. Okay, this is for Warren. Ah. Mm. And you see centuries. From 1.57 million to 1.25 million. This. But after that, it recovers slightly. Lah. But this owner seems like it's confirmed sell very long. Ah. Don't be like this. Another thing for all the owners here. I, I, I can't guarantee you price will definitely drop. But looking at the situation right now, with the slowing of viewings, I mean, if you're selling a house, you know that the, the viewing is not as much as what we used to have. Mm. And the slowing of transaction, mm there is trend and there is signs that this is happening, okay? But like I say, how long will it take for it to drop? No one will know. If you got decent offer, take and go now. Decent means that close to last transacted or slightly mm. below last transacted. Uh, next is, these are all resale, correct? Yeah. Resale, huh? mm. So 2013 to 2015, this period, all resale prices drop. But now we are looking at the same period, the new launch prices, what happened? So this is Park Central's. Okay, in Pongo, 201 to 216. Now, bought in 201 to sign 216, which is mm. almost the same period that we are talking about just yep. now. So, 212, they bought at how much? 1, 2 plus, 1, 2 plus. 216, they sold at how much? 1, 4 plus. So, you see the profit here, mm. about 135 to about 326,000. What I'm trying to show you here is that if we take average of 200,000 profit or 250,000, is that a lot based on no. 1.2 million? It's about 15%. Then you will say, oh, I waste the time. I go and ship, I go and rent, I go and what, what, what. Mm. No point. But you must remember that if I would have sold my HDB, I would have secured my profit. If I sold my condo, I would have secured more profit. 
So even if this one I don't make much, there will be a difference. So high park, same thing to 1.5 to 1.7 also make 100 plus, 200 plus, 300 plus. Huh? Uh, Panorama also, auto 1415 one, five to These are all the new launches that was launched mm. during the same time. Same, same time, yeah. yeah. Talking about this period. Uh, Lakeview, 214 to 18300 plus. Not a lot. I want to re-emphasize not a lot. So today, if you buy a new launch, uh, it's not really to make, like, I want to make 30, 40, 50% like what I do for the last three years. It's more of a hedge against the market. So now you see, what if, uh, in the last market peak is 2012, Cash out Pongo and upgrade to Park Central's 4 billion. We see what happened. Uh. So, Pongo BTO bought is about 300,000. If they cash out resale 2012, uh, 560, they will have about 310,000 sales proceeds. Mm, a bit more uh, la, because uh, we are very mm, conservative on yeah. the CPF use, mm. the 50k. Yeah, so, the proceeds is about 260, la, but the total funds they will have is about 310. So, mm. 310 easily they can buy this 1.2 million property. Correct. So, if they would have sold here 560, Bought this 1.25 million with the down payment, everything they can afford. Uh, sell Park Centrals, bought in 2012, sell in 2016. Six. They will make another 200,000, which is why I say not a lot, but they will make total 260. 260 lah. Uh, plus 200. Close to half a mil still. Uh, 460. This is their profit. Mm. Okay. Why I never take interest here? Because Park Centrals is a new launch, so no interest. Okay. So 460 if I would have exit here. So their asset will be easily maybe about six, seven hundred thousand. Basically the concept here or rather mm. what we want to share with you is that back then, right, mm. if you could have locked in the profit of the HDB and then upgrade to something potentially, you don't have to fork out any single mm. cent, mm. right? Today, your overall asset right, is actually much bigger. Because we are going to show you what will happen if you choose to stay put and then sell mm. today. Not today, uh, we talk about 2016. So if they would have stayed put in the Pongo HDB and sell in 2016. 2016, with their initial down payment and everything, uh, 2016, the sales price as shown is about 440. So the price has dropped about 120,000. Uh. Mm. So CPF use, accrued interest, outstanding loan, everything, they will take back 33,000. With their CPF or inside, uh, they will be having 200,000. So, if I they would have stayed put, they will be 200,000. Okay, if they have sell and bought Park Centrals, they will be ending off with about six, seven hundred thousand. So, what I'm trying to tell you today, if you decided you want to buy a new launch today or sell your resale because it's the big, uh, it's more of I want to exit the market. Okay. Lock in the profit and exit the market. Ah, mm. Then I want to enter. But I don't want to enter a, into a resale because I'm scared also. So I exit the resale. I enter resale, bigger property. Wow, worse. Ah. But what I'm trying to tell you here is that if I exit a resale and I enter a new launch is to hedge against the market. Right now, we are going to go through right, how do you determine like new launches prices will drop through two main factors. All right. Mm. The first factor is knowing what is developer's profit margin. In order to know what is developer's profit margin, we need to first know one thing. It's their break-even price. As a, as a seller today, if you were to enter, if you were to buy this certain property at one, one mil, for example, there is no way you are going to sell below one mil in the future resale market because the one mil is your break-even. And so for all the developers out there, they also have a break-even price. They cannot sell below certain threshold. So I'm going to show you first, 4th Avenue Residences. And as you know, that this is a project that is super near to MRT, right? Yeah. So, very convenient, right? Chances of them dropping price high or not? We don't know, right? So what we want to uh, look at the price over here for break-even of 4th Avenue residences is 2002. Which means if seller were to sell above 2002, that is their profit. If they sell at 2002, bolai. If they sell below, selling at loss law. But okay, I want to show you, right? what happened at 4th Avenue Residences because a lot of us, I think people are always saying you must enter on the first day because mm. VIP launch, first mover advantage. But here we want to look at how much did 4th Avenue Residences launch at. 4th Avenue Residences launched at 2004. Just now mm. the break even was? 2002. 2 As you can see over here, this 2004 PSF price was quite constant for a period of time. Mm. Then if you see this dip here, 
So what happened over here? They dropped their price. COVID ma? Because uh. why? There's no sales. Mm. Sales is very low. So you notice over here, whenever they are selling very close to break even or below break even, you see the units were start to move. Sometimes there will be deep below break even. So you can see here. Uh, deep below. Uh. Uh, now this is 2002 line. Uh. Mm. So this unit is transacted about 2001. Uh. But very fast one. Uh. Deep below uh, all this. Uh, uh, above this $2,200 line. Because why? The developer cannot be selling below 2002 for a long period of time. The bank will come after them. Um, they build property, they also take loan. Uh. So mm. bank got some rules and regulations also. Mm. Uh. But some one, two units, sometimes they don't really care. Uh. But you can see, very fast. So you see anything below Braven, wow, I'll say, time to go in. Uh. Okay, <laughs> that's for 4th Avenue. Uh. Uh. Next, we look at Hugh and Holland. Let's take a look at the Braven price, 2001. Mm. Like I said earlier, right? Anything that is, um, you know, below, you'll be selling at a loss. So you look at Hugh Heaven, right? When he first launched, wow, 2006. Eh. You can see, obviously, the sales is not good. That's why at this point, you look at this point over here. Developers mm. drop price. So in order to determine uh, whether the price they are entering is safe or not, you don't want to be the one while you buy already, then suddenly the next day developer drop the price. Right? You must first look at, are you entering at close to the break-even? Hmm. That's first tip. If you're not close, there's something you need to look up, hmm. which is the sales frequency. Hmm. What do I mean by that? You can check with your own agents if you have, you know, on the sales frequency, <coughs> meaning to say every week, every month, how many units is the developer selling? Like for example, if to, Alex, today you are a seller, I'm selling your property. You see that on the first day of the open house, there's a lot of buyers who came to view. What are the chances of you dropping price? No chance. No <laughs> chance, in fact, maybe you increase, ma. Yeah. <laughs> right, but if today, right, after advertising for three months, then, Still no buyers come. What will you uh, do? Drop price. Uh, drop price law. <laughs> so it's the same thing. The, this is equivalent to the sales frequency. If every week there is, you know, developers sell a few units every week of, or many units every month, they will definitely So how to see price. sales frequency? Later, we will tell you. Yeah. Next one, I will talk, talk to you about Amber Park. Okay, Amber Park is a bit more unique. You see Amber Park, break even is 2001. But you can see that what well, Amber Park launched at 2005. Mm. And it maintained throughout the period of sale. Eh? Mm. There is no chance of dropping because the sales frequency is very good, mm. even though it's very above the break-even price. Mm. Another example, Jitscape. That time I remember it yep. launched very high. Thousand. Break-even, thousand. Break-even. They maintain the price throughout. Thousand six plus. So they are making about five, six hundred dollars per square foot. Lot, eh? Which means that based on the land price, they are making about 50%. Okay, which is quite a lot. Lah. I mean, to be very frank. So they bought a good land. Uh, they bought a cheap land because that time when they are buying, I think uh, there is oversupply in the market. Ma. Mm. So, but the sales frequency is high. So you have not seen Jetscape drop price. Buy close to break even. Buy close to break even, uh, right? Okay. And if you buy very high above break even, uh, if you are concerned that it may drop, check out the sales frequency. So right now, let's look, take a look at those people who purchase very close to break even or when developers launch super close to break even. Mm. Like Florence, mm. 1003 break even. Mm. You look at, you know, 1003, frankly, they said 1004 is not way above their break even, right? But you look at the price, very My steady. My client one. bought at 138 plus. <laughs> 138 plus, wow. You yeah. know the last unit or so, what? 2001. Yeah. Yeah. Insane. Then you see Grandio Park. 1002 break even, huh? You look at what happened over here. Grandio Park mm. right now is sitting on like huge, massive profit. Eh? Mm. Yeah. Huh? Okay. And then last but not least, Forest Woods, 1,002 break even, and you look at the prices, it went up, all in all. Right? So I think this is how we pretty much determine, <coughs> first factor, uh, whether or not developer will join price. Buy close to break even, sure make money. Let me put it this way, buy close to break even, you are freaking safe. Because oh. there's no way developer can drop any further, mm -hmm. you know? You are super safe. At the end of the day, maybe, even if there is no profit, you still will not lose money. Do we have buy close to break even? Uh? Still don't make one, uh. now we see. Uh. So, <laughs> so this Cascadian Reserve, uh, get ABSD deadline extension. So now we see. The break even is 3002. So they launched at about 3.5. You see, uh, this is quite close to break even. Uh. 3.2 to 3.5 is about 5 to 8% differences. So they are quite close. Uh. But why they can drop below break even? Uh? Now they are selling at 3,000. 
I, I'm not saying that this is a good or bad property. I'm just taking this example to show you. I mean, if you can buy today, this is a cheap deal that you can actually get. Uh, but why do this Cascadian Reserve can drop price until below break even? Because these have already achieved CSC. So CSC means that the developer, in fact, by right, shouldn't have any more loan with the bank. Mm. Uh, they have paid off the, the property. So they can decide how much they want to sell. So that's why coming back to just now, the first thing is buy close to break even. Is it sure make money? Because here also buy close, ma, correct? So now the question is buy close. If it reach CSC, it can also come down. So how do we determine buy close to break even, but yet still safe to go in? Right? Which is what we're going to talk about mm. in the next segment. Understanding the three phases of the developer. This is mm. the second factor to determine if developers will drop their new launch prices. Mm. The only party that can control the market is actually the government because of the policies that they put in and it affect the whole market. But in new launch is different. Individual developers, if the pricing strategy, all these things is done correctly, the sales strategies is done correctly, they can actually control the development itself. So now yeah. we see. So there's a three phase that we are talking about. Phase one is a phase that we, have, we call a clear stock phase. This is a sca uncertainty. scary phase. Huh? Uncertainty uh, period. Yeah. So why is it scary? Because, like example, if I buy in here, I say, wow, good price, I'm very close to break even. But the, then I buy already, I see six months, nobody buy. Uh, then how? Then will the developer drop price in future? I don't know. I mean, this, mm. these are things. Second phase is the price adjustment, which you will buy slightly higher, mm. okay, slightly higher, which is usually this 60-90%, so this is below 60, but these are just guide number, it's mm. not 100% mm. sure, uh, depending on the developer itself. Uh. So this period is what is called the safest point to enter, because you know the price has moved up slightly, uh, although you buy slightly higher than that, but you don't need to go through the phase where they have to be scared whether scared, it can yeah. move or not because you know that the units are moving if units are not moving developers will not go up price mm. okay and last phase is the all out profit which means that phase 3 usually 90% and above sometimes it can reach 98% then they will do that the last few units they just want to make the, the money so I'm going to show you some example huh? so this is treasure tampanese a lot of people make money here <laughs> mm. so what happened phase 1 you see for the longest time 2019 to 2020 wow. why so long because 2200 yeah. units uh, 200 over buyers bought first day wow. I remember so uh, you imagine they buy a walkout is 10% so it's not like 30% 40 or 10% eh. so this period is the period where buyers who bought here are stressed uh, 276, 270 units. This period uh, is actually quite long, uh, eh, about 1.5 yeah. years. <laughs> then uh, developer also very stressed. Uh, yeah. uh, then after that, go, go, go. Oh, this part, uh, you see every month, so about 100 units for the last 15 months, uh, which means that easily there is about 1,200 units gone already. Which okay? is half of my inventory. Uh, half of inventory. So the developer move into what? Phase 2. Yeah. Phase 2, they start to increase the price. Do you see the price increment is very gradual? Correct. Mm. So if you buy here, why would it be safe? Because how to determine? Just now we are saying the uh, frequency of sales. Yes, correct. Uh, mm. So frequency of sales cannot be determined like that. I uh. cannot say, oh, every month I sell uh, five units is very good. If you sell every month five units in treasure, you are dead. Must basically the proportion, la, right? Must based on percentage yeah, ratio. Mm. of the balance sold to balance. Which means that balance 500 units Every month, I sold 50 units. Good or bad? Very stable. 10%. Mm. Very good, very good. Mm -hmm. Anything above 6, 7%, I think 5% is, is good. It's, it's a good. Then you have to calculate. From now to TOP, how long? Developer got how long to sell? Mm. Uh, so I calculate. Got another 20 months to TOP. And 20 months, and I'm selling 5%, 5 to 8% every month. Okay, let's say 8%. Say. So for every development, it's different treasure. Have to sell about 25 unit one month ah. it's considered a very bad sales day yeah. it's very good for like arcade <laughs> yeah. mm. so you see here these few months all 100 100 100 the sudden search ah, 100 100 100 100 then they do what increase price very clear here ah. phase one phase two phase three i show you three examples it's amazing you know zero eight one one nine this is one of my client who bought it ah. he bought it when nobody so your client is the Brave one and Quite brave lah. Huh? So he bought this quite good unit. Huh? 08119 here is unblocked facing. Huh? Uh, mm. 1.332 phase 1. 1289 per square foot. So uh, 10119. Huh? 1339. 1 1.384. So the difference is 52,000. 52,000, two floor higher. Because same stack. Huh? So one floor that time is average about 10 
8 to 10,000. Mm. So 52 means that they already increased price by about 1 to 2%. Mm. So 1 to 2%, man, this one is phase 2 one, man, safe or not? Actually, I tell you, very safe. Not Why? Because uh, phase 3 come, uh, 12, 1, 2, 0. 1, 2, 0 is facing expressway. 1.851. This is developer sales. This is the last few units. So if I know it's moving and the balance unit not a lot, ah, then I come in here, it's safe for me to enter. So these are the things that you need to gauge. Huh? Next example, stack 10 and stack 11. 11 is facing where? Rubbish shoot. Bin. Yep. 10 is facing pool. Pool facing 1.335. Phase 1, this is done in 2019. After that, 2021, you see this period to this period quite long, but it depends some developer that the period might be shorter. About one and a half years, bought at 1.41 million second floor. So it's slightly higher. Mm. Maybe we are talking about a premium of about $60,000, $70,000. Last unit, stack 11, I remember, I don't know why. I just recently went there. Wow, it's uh, terrible, man. You saw this unit? I saw this unit. I, I, I see, I don't know which level is that, but I saw one selling the bin and they are the, the cheapest already. Third floor sold. 1.637. Phase 3, buy phase bin 1, 300,000 higher than the... <laughs> so, buy here safe or not? 1.41, good facing. So, this is treasure. Now, we are going into another development. My favorite she development. Versus, I'm very happy over here. Which is what? Uh, I bought Joy it. bought. Huh? So, she bought also... <laughs> I'm the Garang one that bought on the first day. The 160 units <laughs> one is her. Uh, it's not selling super well, uh, over I remember, 700 over You know right now I look back, actually I went to check it back the news article right uh, The first day launch only 20% eh. Yeah. 20, I wasn't even worried 20 plus percent <laughs> Okay, but yeah, it's still not yeah, a yeah. lot la. Not a lot la. then you see yeah. the, the But after the launch, the sales are quite healthy 70 mm. units, 18 units, 50 over Then the developers start to think mm, I should increase price ah. So they increase eh Every uh, few weeks, they will say our oh, price increase 2%, 5%. Mm. Okay, 5% is a lot. Thank la. you, Hoi Hap. <laughs> 5% for 1.5 million property is $75,000. Okay? Then suddenly, got one day, I woke up. I remember. Up, I saw the increment. Then I still like, did I see wrongly? Because the jump is about $250,000. It's 10%, I remember. It's um, maybe more than 10 You know why not? Life. Because they suddenly announced the MRP is nearby. I was also shocked because I have never seen this kind of price increment in my career, like mm. three years career. That's mm. I never seen. Every time the increment is like one, two percent, but it was the instant ten percent. And as an owner, oh, see, pay happy. So you see, uh, <laughs> why why is the difference between these two? Uh? this one after phase one, uh, still got quite a lot of units. Then phase two, they start to move. Then you see phase three, the supply are all very low. So that's why I say developer can control prices. Mm. So uh, if you find a developer that uh, the strategy is doing well, their units are selling well, this are uh, high chance going to happen. Uh. Uh, so why this phase one so long? Because they take longer to clear units. Okay, mm. but you see key, uh, the phase one very short. Why? Because this phase is already clear a lot. So phase two start, you see the volume drop. Why volume drop? Because not much you need to buy. Mm. So phase three, you see here, every month, uh, one unit, one unit, one unit. I think I take this example better. 0627, uh, 1.747. Or oh, 980 square feet. Then uh, 0327. So my buyer bought in this period, 2021, which is about nine months apart. That's why I say it's not guaranteed the time frame. Like uh, uh, phase one mm. to phase two is one and a half mm. year. No, no, no. It's depending on the sales speed of the developer. So here, 1.885. Will you buy or not, Joy? 140,000 more. Skip. Which is about. 8% more. Scared. It's quite a lot of money. But eh? if I have an agent like you who advise me and show me this, of course I will have the confidence to enter, right? Yeah. So <laughs> you see, moving well, <laughs> third floor, I buy higher than my neighbor. Wow. 140,000. But later, the last one, 0227, bought 2.282. Phase 3. This the, is the time where I woke up, they increased 200 over 1,000 in one night. The highest PSF transactor here actually is a past 2 4 already. Mm. By developer. Yes. Yeah. So, I would say this is the safest because phase one you buy uh, is safe in a certain extent. But if oh, the launch is not doing well, and after that you see no nobody buy, hmm. then you are uh, be a bit concerned. Uh. Then you might not go through these three phase. Uh. Your phase <laughs> is like that one. There's uh. no three phase. <laughs> uh. So how to determine uh. these three phase? Close to break even if it's good. Mm. I mean, that's not the main concern. Uh. Mm. Even if you're higher than break even, it's still okay. Mm. 
but depending on the, the phase speed also. of the sales have to be sales frequency. It's very hard to determine speed of sales for resale. Mm. New launch is easy. But I we can still see. there's too many parties already. Mm. Um, yep. New launch only one party, which is the developer. If they can do mm. perfect pricing strategy, uh, you really stand to gain. Yep. But we still there's like so many moving parts in terms of a seller, mm. buyer, landlord, tenant. Mm. So it's a bit of like uh, a bit ambiguous over there. Mm. So right now we're going to show you one particular project, right? Mm. One day, uh, from phase one, jump all the way to phase three. Wow. Actually, first day is phase one to phase three. Yeah, phase, all, yeah, true, true, true. All the transaction came in, then here no more. Eh. Wow. I, I recall, like, after Pass Series 8 was launched, right? The news actually came out that a lot of uh, angry buyers who didn't manage to mm. get their units went to complain because developer increased price too fast. So it's 1004 to, I think, in the middle, it's 1006. It's $2,000 in one day. Wow. Because as a developer, there is difference people that we are working with. The bosses is the people that we might not see. Huh? So the bosses, uh, to them, is they might not be down there to see the whole sales process. One, uh. mm. They will have someone that they hire to actually help run through this whole thing. So when they sell, let's say 1,004, uh, and it sell out one day, uh, maybe it's still huge margin, but okay. if you're a seller, today I'm your agent, uh, then I bring buyer. A lot of buyer come, uh, then you ask for this, I advise you to sell 1.5 million. Within one day, come in at 1.5, 1.55, 1.58. 1 you go home up with you. Lousy lah, I should have sell higher. You will think that maybe, yeah. why you, like, you, you advise me wrongly. Yeah. So same thing, the bosses will feel that the, the staff advise wrongly in terms of pricing. That's why sometimes the staff decide to oh, up price, up price to make sure we yeah, don't yeah, sell yeah, up first. Yeah. True, true, true. Uh, because they're also worried. Uh, we, are, we are just taking this example as a developer, as a seller. Actually, it's the same one. Everything true. behaves the same manner. We are all humans. Mm. So this is what happened to past phase So what I'm trying to show you here is the timing of the phase can be different. If you got into a launch like reserve residence, like past phase 8, you got a good queue, then you see wow, so many people, so many ball ballot, uh, then can I buy? Maybe I can, uh, then I saw a good price, then I can go in. Now, I, because I know, today we are going to reach phase two very soon. But if I'm buying another development that is, you know, a bit slower, and then I need to look at the frequency, all these things. Uh, so, so there's so many That'll things to... That'll be post-launch mm. mm. okay. So this is past reset. Yeah, look at the price, I mean. 0746, 1.53. This one is 24th July 2021. I don't want to look at this, la, because this is done in 2023. La. I look at this one, two days later, 26th July 2021. 1.92, 390,000 increase. Key thing is not the increment, it's the date. They <laughs> bought two days ago. <laughs> Instant profit. So it's, it's, what I'm trying to say is this is a one day increment. That's why I say the phase one to phase three is not standard timing. You still have to base on your experience to understand all these things, to know what phase are we in now mm. and whether we can enter. Because all different projects will have different time frame that you are looking. So we actually classify whatever the project that is in the market right now mm. into all these three phases. We have the clear stock one, which is they are selling very mm. quite close to break even. And then we have the price adjustment ones mm. and also the all out profit. Actually, we are uh, categorizing these uh, based on percentage. So less than 60, more than 60, more than 90. Mm -hmm. uh, but I tell you frankly, no. Because uh, Pine Tree Hill should be phase 2A. Continuum should be phase 2A. Project like Tembusu Gram might still be in phase 1. Depending on the unit type that you are looking for. Because the 4-bedroom might be at the day 1 price. So that's why I say, you cannot say, oh 60% phase 2, 30% uh, phase 1. No, no. Because Pine Tree Hill have increased price multiple times. So mm. it's already in phase 2. They are confident that they can sell. Continuum yeah, has increased sure. price a few times. But although not a lot, like 1%, 1%, but they are in phase 2. And they are moving well every day they are selling unit. So you must understand it's not based on percentage to gauge. Huh? But this three is confirmed in phase three. Like, don't need to say. Uh, Jaden might still be in phase two. Uh, the price has not increased so much. But Landor Modern, wow. Reserve. Uh, you see day one price and today price, you will know. To recap, uh, why we can have a new launch that still make money in the down market? Because of price control. So if we sell our resale, because resale, we can't control price. No one can control price. We sell resale at the high price today, maybe slightly lower than the market price, and we enter into a new launch that the developer know how to control price one. Because everyone enter at the same time. Yeah, then they know how to uh, increase the price slightly. So then I think we are safe uh, to protect our profit. 
yet make a, a bit of profit here. Key thing, if I could have locked my profit of 300,000, 600,000 here, then I could have made another 300,000 here. Uh, it's a, yes. a lot of difference than uh, I don't lock my profit. Uh, three years later, uh, the profit from 600 dropped to 300. So 600 plus 300 is 900. 600 uh, plus 300, uh, 600 lock for resale. Uh. You know, some of you might be sitting on this profit. I'm just taking some example. Plus 300 for the new launch is 900. 600, uh, the price came down, uh, then dropped to, you only make 300,000. Uh. So the difference is how much? Even though this is not a lot, but I'm profiting from both sides here and Asset here. Asset progression. I am protecting myself from a downturn that I see. Mm. Then go into somewhere that the price is, I would say the keyword is controlled. A uh, new launch is a uh, very controlled environment if you are working with the right developer. Hoi Hub, and the right agent. Simlian. CDL is usually their trend is, you see Amber Park, mm. they don't drop, but their increase oh. is more gradual. Mm. Uh, so different developer, different way that they are doing it. Mm. Uh, then like uh, UOL, also uh, gradual increment. Mm. Uh, different scenario also got different uh, mm. situation. Huh? Mm. Okay. So mm. we're just going to play a little game over mm. here. Basically, um, Alex wouldn't know what I pull out. Yeah. Okay, he, he has never seen the slides after this. So I'm just going to throw him some random developments in the market right now. Okay, I have got the break-even price. I have got the frequency of sales. I have got the percentage sold. And I'm just going to ask him, can enter down. or not? Alright, Lake yeah. Gardens, we have got break-even 2000. Mm. And right now, as of now, uh, Lake Gardens just launched uh, recently, right? The sales is actually 37% so only. Mm. Frequency of sales, I only give you the past 4 months. Mm. Mm. Balance still got 115. Okay, so let's say balance 115. Let's say, uh, let's say take this. 7-9 uh, units sold is a very decent number. And we are buying very close to break-even. So this is a project that you can be say that you are safe to enter. But... I knew. We got Sora coming. Yeah. When so is this that? is the uh, June. This is a time bomb. You don't know how they're going to launch. Because you need Sora's to see first. It's ah. cheaper, right? Cheaper by about maybe close to $100 somewhere. Lah. But what I'm trying to say here is that if they launch at the same price or if they launch slightly higher, before you buy into, you must see this one also to get a safer. Wow. So now lah. you're saying. Uh, Not only mm. see the developer profit margin, sales frequency, mm. which phase also need to know your surrounding, yep. right? Because there's 440 units in Sora. Mm. So it's going to add in quite a lot of supply in this area. Wow, okay. okay. Next, Grand Diamond. Grand Diamond, 2002. This was super like hot, you know, because it's just ne right mm. next to the MRT. Mm. As of now, they are 65% sold, right? Mm. The frequency of sales is solid. Mm. Like. This one, I think, really no chance to come down already. Right you look at the prices like that, uh, we are almost reaching phase 3. Uh, we are in between 2 and 3. So the frequency of these things is definitely good. 27 units. I think they increase price just for 4 bedrooms. So uh, balance left 300 plus units. If we are selling 6 units in April, but uh, in March is 27 units. Uh, if we are selling like average of 15 units to 20 units every month, uh, in about one and a half years, we will sell out, which means that we are on mm. track. Huh? Mm. Definitely no issue in terms of what the price will not we'll drop. Will stay, yeah, correct. Or even increase. But will you make more? I don't know because you are buying about mm. 8 to 10% higher now. So it's a bit of a uh, certain risk that you are taking because mm. you are. You, if, you, if you buy a 2.6, uh, uh, everyone buy a 2.550, or you buy a maybe 2.6 something, mm. I think it's okay. But now we are touching 2.7. So, and so, two seven mm. in the similar in the same district, right? Uh, we have got continuum asking two eight. Hold, uh. It's a freehold asking uh. two eight. Then we have Tembusu Grand mm. asking uh two uh. three to two six, yeah. right? This range. Then after that we got one more plot coming up, Tembusu yeah. two, mm. which is end of this year. Yeah. Likely la, right? Harmonization. Yeah. So another uh, thing is that the mm. more supply coming in, we don't know what is going to happen. Yeah. I mean things like that. Price uh, increment definitely will be there, but maybe you know, in terms mm. of like you know, profit wise, it may not be the best. Yeah, I I, I think it's a safe purchase, but mm. just that you might not see a lot of profit. Mm. Okay. okay. Arcadi at Bunkeng, this is also fairly new. This is 2002 uh, break even. Let's take a look. As of now, they are 52 units. So, so for Arcadi, I think the problem is the frequency uh, of sales uh, is not seen for a period of time. I cannot say launch January, uh, mm. then February sell 20 and I say, wow, this one frequency damn good. Like, cannot. I have to see uh, February 
Wow, only one, two, three units. Oh. Ah, and April, uh, maybe up to May, every month uh, is like 10, 10, 10. Uh. Is it safer than uh, February 220? Cannot. Uh. Mm. Ah, you get what I mean? So if I see 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 uh, like that, uh, then I know. Wow, this one table. Because the problem here is that the is slightly higher than break even. The break even is 2, 2 plus, mm. mana, it's 2, 6. Mana. So mm. there's a chance. I mean, I don't say that it will drop. But... If we have good frequency, then definitely. So I think it's uh, observation period. Not say can't you buy. You put it very nicely. I want to say uh, another word, but uh, sure, is, uh. nothing. So, uh, but observe a bit more to see the frequency. <laughs> yep. whether you can see and wait a bit, lah. Mm. Right? If you yeah. are you are intending to enter into yeah. this uh, project. All right. Next, next one. Uh, Interesting. Seneca. One five eight three. Oh, MCC then. Um. Right now we are at seventy one percent. So much pretty okay. Right. Left twenty eight percent. One five eight three. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I see again. Ah, okay. Seneca was mm. bought it during the you know when land was mm. not so high mm. like they were bought it way before because mm. there are some I think sales mm. license mm. issue or something yeah. right. What What do you think about this project? My guide of buying first good frequency ma correct. Mm. Good sales uh, numbers based Check on this la. to Check the balance right. unit. If this is very healthy, even if you're high from break even, can okay, okay. safe mm. safe ah. Huh? But of course, the price have not increased too much. Right? They can launch very high. So let's say Sinica can be 1006, they launch at 2001. Then they are selling every month left 70 cents. Every month they are selling 6, 7 units. Mm. Safe, right? ah, very safe. Go in. Second is average sales figure, which means that maybe left over 77, you are selling average about 3, 4 units. But you are close to break even. Either situation is good to enter. So if you are far from break even, but yet, the figures are not super healthy. Mm. There's a bit of risk. True, true, uh, true. I put it okay. this way. So either these two, mm. either one. Yep. Uh, then it will be safe. Okay, okay? okay we are done. Mm. And okay. so, mm. right now, we are on to the Q&A. So, uh, while we are waiting, I'm waiting for you all to see whether there's any question. Uh, I just mm. want to sum up the whole thing. If I'm owner today, I high chance I will be looking at disposing my property. But of course, I need to have the next step which is where I'm going to yes, enter. That's more important. So if I'm holding on to a property right now and I have made huge profit in the last few years, I might be looking at sell and buy into a new one. But based on the just now what we have mm. shared, they are in maybe phase 1.5 or mm. phase 2. Right? Recently, we also realized in quite a bit of districts mm. out mm. there, uh, estates out there, um, there are a lot of new ones, right? Selling at resale prices. Hmm. This is also a very good opportunity for you to partake in. Usually, we can do three things. Huh? One is sell, buy new. Second is sell, buy resale. Third is sell, do nothing. Wait, huh? see how. Huh? Then later, see whether one go into resale. Huh? This is first choice. This is second choice. So, maybe different people got different view. But I, what I'm trying to show you here is this is something that you never should do. <laughs> choice three. Very dangerous. So, it's either one or two. Pertaining this market lah. Pertaining mm. what we are looking at right now. Mm. So sell, do nothing. You are taking risk, but it's not as risky as you buy a resale today. <laughs> huh? So so this is the three options. Yep. Any advice on where Leiden Green is? Leiden Green have already passed because uh, it's all already crossed the already developer sales. Already T.O.P. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it already passed phase 1, 2, 3. It's actually in phase 4, which is what Cascadian all this is in. Mm. Okay, because you have to be having balance unit, then you will be calculated in the phase one, two, three, uh, mm. from the developer point. Uh, mm. How do you determine a good sales frequency that is proportional to project up. size? Is there an MOM guideline to for what? No, no, no guideline, but yeah. based on my experience, yeah. I think anything more than 5% balance unit sold. Okay, sorry. Balance, uh, 100 units. Huh? Left, 5 months to TOP. Selling, just now I say 5%, uh, balance, 100 unit. Sell, 8 units a month. More than 5%, good or bad? This is a bad situation because by the time 5 months, you only 40 units so you still got 60 units left and the project already TOP. So the developer will be stressed during this period of time. Mm. But now we look at another example. Ah. Balance, 100 units. Okay, okay. Left, left, let's say left 30 months. Every month selling 4 units. Below 5%, good or bad? So the, how we calculate whether it's a good this balance unit multiplied by this one, the balance month, will I be able to cross this number? Mm. How fast will I be able to cross? Mm. The fastest I'll be able to cross, the safer it is. So this one, this multiplied by this cannot cross. 
So a bit risky, you, mm. you get it? So how to determine? I think this is a good way to answer you, Carol. That's why I say, how to determine phase 1, 2, 3? No standard way to determine. Ah, uh, this one I give you oh, standard you way. Yeah. Uh, this one I give you very standard <laughs> way. Yeah. Also, uh, but there's no way to determine everything just based on a, a simple concept of whichever. Yeah. So if you really want to understand, should I sell, should I buy, or should I what? Contact us. Yeah. Duh, we are here. Thank Bye. you very much. Bye-bye.